Okay, folks, good evening and welcome to the Blue Part 1872 podcast. Tonight, folks, we are joined by James Beattie. James also played for Blackburn, Everton, has two spells at Sheffield United, Stoke, and obviously a spell up at Glasgow Rangers. Uh, we'll be talking, I know there's going to be a massive Rangers audience on here, I can see it already. So I'm sure there'll be a few questions about Rangers coming in. Folks, um, coming up next week, uh, at 7 o'clock on the Sunday is ex-Rangers, Man United and Northern Ireland legend, and that's Jimmy Nickel. Obviously, Jimmy took charge of Rangers for a, a few games uh, a couple of years ago when we went through a bad spell. So Jimmy's going to be on. And also, in the future, folks, I've just spoke to Davy Robertson, a uh, nine-year-old legend. Davy will be on because he's got a new book coming out called The Quiet Man Roars, and Davy will be on with uh, Alistair Aird, who helped produce the book. And the foreword in the book is by Richard Goff. So, folks, watch this space. You never know. We may have a guest for that, for Davey Robertson. Um, how's your weekend been, folks? Big game tomorrow night for Southampton. Um, and Rangers had a good good victory on Thursday night through the last, what is it, 16 in the Europa League. So, folks, get your questions coming in. and see them starting to come in already. We'll get as many questions as we can to James for about an hour. So, hopefully... If I hit my button, the man himself should arrive. Good evening, James. Good evening. How, How are, are you, you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. very well, thank you. And thanks for coming on, mate. We're delighted You're to get welcome. you on. Obviously, we're streaming live to Saints World as well. Your friend, Ron Saints World, Robbie. Yeah. So Hi, we're glad evening, to... Rob. Yeah, he's on here already. Yeah, there he is. He's, he's hit you up already there from Robbie. So, James, uh, obviously, starting out your career, you started at Blackburn. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I um, I only started playing football when I was about 14 because I used to be a swimmer. So, right. Uh, I got a shoulder injury. I was I was pretty good. I got to second in the country when I was 13. Wow. Um, so I only really started playing football when when I was 14. Right, um, okay. So that's why, that's why I was probably a bit raw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're a raw, you're a decent career, mate. Yeah. Um, Obviously, what age then? So you're part of the day to bring. Was it um, this, Kevin Davis up to went to Blackburn? You come the other way. Yeah, I, I think it was. I think it was a, a little bit earlier. But I, I remember that moment because being a Blackburn fan, it was. Uh, I was devastated. Like literally, I was 20 years old. I'd made my debut at 18 against Arsenal um, against yeah. Keon and Adams. Who you know kicked the crap out of me for ninety <laughs> minutes, um, but Ian Wright scored two, and I remember he came up to me after the game. He said, "Keep playing like that, son. You'll be all right." So, um, but yeah, I and then I made a couple of appearances uh, because Blackburn at that time, as you know, they were they were uh, really financially sound with 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 the backing of Jack Walker, yeah, and, and were going out and buying whoever. Uh, so they were sort of the Man City or, yeah. or, or whatever of, of that time. and uh, But I'd mapped it out in my head. And so I played a few reserve games, did well did well in the reserves the year when I was 19 um, and thought, right, okay, um, I'll make a few more f first team appearances next year yeah. and, and get in the team and try and establish myself as, as a, a forward. I, you know, I know that would have been difficult. Um but I, had, I got a phone. I remember it. I was in I was in Cliveroe playing golf, and it was pre-season, so it was lovely and warm. And I was with uh, Damien Taylor, one of me, you know, one of my good mates from Blackburn, and Tom Finn, the secretary, rang me and just said, "We've sold you to Southampton." Yeah, I remember. I I I, I remember. I started. Yeah, I, I welled up. I was so upset because I, you know, it was my hometown team, and um, it was devastating. But in hindsight, probably looking back, it was it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, coming down to Southampton. So, folks, get your qu uh, the questions are coming in already, but they're all coming from Rangers fans, folks. Where's the Southampton questions? Uh, straight away, James Gary Martin. Hi, James. Hope you're well. What was the highlight of your time at Rangers? Um, yeah, difficult time for me at Rangers. Um, I explained it to you before, Gaz. Yeah. But do you want me to? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and 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 this is this is um, I was I was gutted with how it went at Rangers because you know massive club was really looking forward to playing, 
but when I signed, I had I hadn't been training for about six months because of the the infamous Pulis incident. So I've been training on my own, and then I signed right at the end uh, of the of the summer window. Yeah, I think it was about a week before uh, the start of the season. The first game was Kilmarnock. Um, and I sat down with with uh, Walter and Ali and 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 said, you know, they knew the situation, but we we'd agreed that I was going to do about two months pre season to get fit and conditioned and yeah. up to speed. And then um, I don't know if you remember the evening of um, the Kilmarnock game. Stephen Davis got ill; he was yeah. taken ill, yeah. and so I arrived at Ibrox. Um, I was on the bench, I think, so they were going to integrate me slowly, you know. But I, my training was my training regime was going to be really hard, um, and I wanted that to make sure that I, when I played, I was fit. And uh, he pulled me in the office, did Walter. So I, he said, "Oh, um, I know we we spoke about the the training regime and that." And I said, "Let me stop you there." I said, "I want to play because I'd heard about Debo, yeah. you know, through the grapevine and that." And he said, "Right, that'll do for me, son." And and then I played. Um, so I had, I think I had about three three starts, and and in all that time I was training in between and getting fitter. But I think it was about three games later I, I ruptured my rep fem, which is the main kicking muscle in in my right leg. Yeah, and that put me out for another fourteen weeks. Um, so it it was it was bad timing. Dave all getting ill was bad timing, <laughs> um, and then in in hindsight. You know, because I was so eager to play, yeah. I just said, yeah, no problem, without even thinking about, you know, if I could break down or get injured or whatever. Yeah. Um, because outside there was 45,000 fans and I don't think anybody's going to turn the opportunity to make the debut, you know, yeah. sooner than you, you, you would have expected. Um, yeah. But in hindsight, I wish I'd have, I'd have said... But then, if I'd have said to the man, if I'd have said to Walter, you know, oh no, I don't want to play. I want to get fit first. Yeah, you, you know. But I don't know. It, that's one thing I would change. And I think if if I if I'd have done that, if I'd have done that fitness regime, uh, because of the lack of training leading up to signing for Rangers, yeah, then I think things would have gone differently. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, you, the Stoke was a, the famous battle of Tony Pulis. Can you tell us what happened there, James? Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've not told this story before. Right, you better tell me. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we we played we played Arsenal, and uh, I, I don't I don't think anybody expected us to win the game. Um, you know, but we were we were we were pretty tough to play against in them days. Uh, we lost we only lost two 0 which I thought was a good result. <laughs> um, and uh, and then Tony proceeded to you know throw a um, throw a paddy in the in the dressing room, and uh, we were going on the it was the Christmas party weekend, and uh, he said, "All right, you you're not you're in Monday now," and all the lads started shouting and you know using bad language and that and he thought it, he thought it was me but it was it wasn't me yeah so uh, about two or three minutes has passed and then all of a sudden the, the the staff changing room opened he's got his towel around him and he's he's making his way over to me and i'm thinking he's coming over here um and i was just in my sloggies so i just had my underpants on <laughs> and, and you know back in them days i was quite you know i was quite a, a bit of a tank and uh he sort of was was making a beeline for me, and uh, I thought, oh, he's going to do something here. And then he sort of launched at me with his head to try and headbutt me, and he, he he missed me. So then I just pushed him and just said, "What are what are you doing, you stupid old man?" Or some words to that effect. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, and that that was a twenty pull and, and he and his towel did fall off. It, it did it, I. Yeah, <laughs> not very impressive, Tony. <laughs> low blow, James. Low blow. All right, folks, get your questions coming in. Obviously, there. Neil McKeg says, "James, what was your thoughts walking up the marble staircase at Ibrox and running the tunnel for the first time?" 
It's very impressive the staircase, Rangers. Yeah, I mean, as I said to you before, it 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 felt like such a, a great opportunity for me, um, and I, I was I was, and I do look back on it, and 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 uh, you know, it was it was a great opportunity, um, you know, to go to a, a really huge club with massive history. And, and do something special and uh and as as we've spoke about it it didn't work out but walking into the st- I really like old stadiums or older stadiums yeah. and and the history and when you walk through those doors and you see the staircase up to the trophy room it was a proper I remember walking around before I'd signed and and you just get the, the feeling that yeah this is a you know it's a proper club um and I was really proud to sign and uh it was just, yeah, as I said, um, a perfect storm with with my lack of fitness, and I didn't, I didn't uh, do it justice. I didn't do the club justice. I didn't do myself justice. But you know, it was it was just one of them things, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. So there's a happy birthday. Ha- your birthday yesterday, James. Huh? Yeah, my birthday yesterday. Good man. Forty three. Forty three. Wow. Uh, folks, if you Southampton fans, get get your questions in for James. The questions come in thick and fast. So obviously, I'm going to ask this because obviously you played with Stephen Gerrard yourself. So how buzzing you to see Stevie G and the boys stop the mysterious ten and put Rangers back where they belong? How good a job do you think Stephen Gerrard's doing, James? He's he's doing a tremendous job. I think he's I think he's been really um, really astute with with getting Gary Gary McAllister in there. Um, yeah. But I think I think Stevie's played at you know he's played at Liverpool his his whole career and he, he knows what he knows what big clubs in he, he probably I don't know whether he would have um, he would he I mean he's always the, the fans have always been expectant but the, you know the Rangers fans are are uh, you know really expectant but to do it as quickly as he's done it yeah is is a really amazing amazing feat um, I suppose he's always had the the sort of managerial head on him, even when he was playing, you know, the leader head, um, yeah. and he translated that into into his his you know his managerial career, um, really hit the ground running, and you know it's it the 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 club's back where it belongs, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, I would say fighting the title out with Celtic, but they, <laughs> they haven't made much of a fight of it. But that's not to say, you know, that's yeah. taking nothing away from Stephen and and the team. Yeah. Um, but I know, I know, as as is with a lot of clubs, the the fans would would love to be there, especially with you know stopping the ten. Yeah. Um, and and you asked me before. I, I loved Glasgow. It was a great city. Um, really enjoyed being there. Um, and and you you when you when you I was I was staying in the city in a, in a, an apartment and and when you when you walking about in the town. You really feel, you know, the, the the expectancy of the fans, you know, back in them days. Yeah. Um, but there was, the, you know, the rivalry was so so fierce. Um, but everybody loved football, and and I think Glaswegians were. What I found was, I think Glaswegians were really proud of the city, and and they said, yeah, you know, you'll enjoy it here. It's a good city, and even the Celtic fans said to me, as long as you don't play well against us. <laughs> uh, we hope you enjoy your time here. But um, yeah, he's done. He's done a great job, and 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 as I say, he brought brought the club back to to where it belongs. Yeah, and here's one for you. Good evening, Gary and James. James, thank you for the iPads you give to St Mary's Primary. Very appreciated by the students. You're doing a lot of charity work, James, aren't you? Around the city of Southampton. Yeah, I think this. You know, the city's given me a lot. Um, my fam, we we still live here. Um, yeah. I met I met my wife when I was when I was playing down here, and it's a it's a really good city, real you know lots of potential. We we all understand the the the, the situation that we're all in at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a way for me to sort of give give the city something back, and yeah, um, I've I've been doing mainly through the Saints Foundation. Yeah. Um, who do terrific, 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 terrific work in Southampton yeah. already? Um, the fair share stuff was, um, you know, going and, and packing food up and then and then sending it out, um, yeah. which was great. Met loads of 
really nice people um you know who do who do it for the same reason just yeah. to, to to try and make a difference as as little as that difference may be you know to try and try and make a difference and i thought well i'm in a position where i i'm i'm healthy and i'm fit and i i wanted to go into you know do something and so it started with fair share um and then i've i've been delivering prescriptions and food bundles with the um patient support hub at southampton uh, university hospital uh and then yeah the latest one was um the the ipads for the school um but me but me being me i, I said he always 10 is 10 enough you know because there's 650 students in that school yeah and um, 250 of which are on the premium lunch package so it's a it's a it's a really underprivileged school in in a it's yeah. in the shadow of St Mary's. You know what it yeah. is, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I know what it is. Um, but it's in the shadow of St Mary's, and and I just thought, you know, just to try and do. And I, I said to the head teacher, I said, it's not going to cause a problem, is it? Because if you've got students fighting over iPads, I don't want to be the, the cause yeah. of that. And she yeah. said, no, it's all right. We we work it into a, a rotor, and you know, he, he, even for he, he, even for the you know the kids who are at home, not to have yeah. an iPad or a it's or, or or to be able to uh, you know a, a device not to be able yeah. to learn on yeah um, but she said now nah, we'll in, we'll integrate them properly and i said right okay just make sure you do that because i don't want to <laughs> have that on me on my mind yeah brilliant work james brilliant what you're doing you know a lot of a lot of ex pro should should copy what you're doing fantastic work brilliant uh question from matthew williams what was your striking partners oh no What's if your striking partners of Southampton? Did you enjoy playing with the most, James? Cool. Um, enjoyed playing with them all, really, but but for different reasons. But I think my my favourite one was Marion Pahars. Um, Marion sort of came over to England as a, a as an unknown quantity. It was in the uh, Great Escape year, so I think yeah. a lot of credit's got to go to Dave Jones. You know, for for having the you know the the guts to put him in and bring him over, but he was brilliant. As soon as he he used to he used to pretend he didn't talk English, Marion, but he did. <laughs> so any, <laughs> anything anyone he didn't want to talk to, he just go huh what huh and like that. But he was he was quality, and then um, he, he he sort of slotted in straight away because the the dressing room was brilliant. Um, you know, a little bit when I first went down there. Um, you you had all the experienced lads in there who, who made him feel really at home, and he, he was he was great. He, he's still the only player I've seen who can run at full pace and change uh, change angle like ninety degree angle at full pace. Ridiculous, yeah, yeah unbelievable power in his legs. Yeah. Um, and he was you know very good player. We yeah. sort of complemented each other well, I think, with a little a little one and a big one, and he, yeah, but his character was brilliant. He he was great. Yeah. I still speak yeah. to Marion now. Oh, do you? Well, hopefully yeah. we we'll get him on the podcast. Maybe you can help us, James. Get in touch with him. Yeah, that's another one. How many more? How many more do you want me to get on? As many as you can get me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll help you out. No problem. Yeah, good man. Uh folks, keep, keep your questions. I know you is going to be a Rangers audience here, so there we go again. Hi, James. Where do you rank Walter as a gaffer? Yeah, Walter was very good. He he was. Um, he was, you know, as I said, that we we sat down and talked for ages, and and he had a, you know, a big reputation. Did Walter, um, and and an in, in instant res respect from any player, really. Uh, but it was it was great to talk to him. I still see him every now and again, um, at the LMA dues, um, or or the you know the um, the days that they have when they have special guest speakers in, and yeah. um, so he's he's still around the circuit. But he was he was he was very good. His man management was 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 particularly good. Um, but he yeah, good really really nice guy. But he yeah, good gaffer. And I just wish I could have repaid him for him signing me. Yeah. Uh, question for me at Robbie. Uh, what Saints manager improved your game the most, James? Um. Well, I I I've got no doubt who it is, but I, I I've. I don't know whether uh, it's it's all changed now. 
because he he doesn't think the same way. This guy I'm thinking of, he doesn't think the same way as as he did back then. Um, the the answer to the question is is Gordon Strachan by a right. by a long way. Um, but I remember when Gordon at uh, Glen Oddle said to me, "You'll never be a Premier League footballer." Wow. Um, but as you know, he did he didn't know me, he didn't know my character, so. The first thing I said in my head, it wasn't all right, okay, then and, and and start sulking. It was right, I'll show you then. So about three weeks later, I got in the team because he was going to sell me to Crystal Palace. Do you remember that? No. And, uh, about three weeks later, I got in the team and scored ten in ten. <laughs> <laughs> and really? then he he came in the paper and said, "Ah, look what I've done to James Beatty." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, mate? But um, so it, it, Glenn might say it was him, but it's it's definitely Gordon. Uh, but God, yeah, Gordon was great. Again, he, his man management was was superb, and uh, surely knew how how to get the best out of me. Um, there was always a line, you know, where 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 you could push it to, because um, he used to he used to take the Mickey out of himself, and there was nothing that he would ask me to do that he wouldn't do himself yeah um and he, he he was he was brilliant great great um atmosphere and and great culture within the players uh i had good people around him good staff gary pendry was there who i've recently you know encountered quite a bit at birmingham and uh dennis rolf and it it was and then he had he had he had us lot and I, i've always said it we weren't we weren't necessarily a team of stars, but together as a team, and we were we were so fit. We used to do running twice a week, even if we had a game. And uh, I think if you look at our results at, at that sort of period of time, we 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 were we were grinding teams down. We were really tight at the back, you know, not conceding many because we had Klaus yeah. and, and Michael and Auntie and, and Jonah um, at the back, Dodzy at right back. Uh, Bridgie at left back and so we weren't really conceding but we had so much energy come the last 15 minutes of games we were, we would you know it was nil nil and then we were relentless we were just yeah. running all over teams and, and scoring in the last sort of 15 20 minutes of games um so that was a big a big thing um and I think I benefited from having the earlier swimming career because of my my lung capacity I was I was we, I was actually at one point playing games and then I know I could have gone. So we had 90 minutes at the end of the game. I could have played another 90 minutes. I was that fit. Brilliant. And that hung, and because and because you were enjoying it that much and you were that hungry that yeah. it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have bothered me. And if any, if any sports scientist had come to me and said, Oh, you've done too much. You can't do any more. Yeah. He'd have got told where to go. <laughs> well, obviously, obviously, uh, Strachan took us to the FA Cup final as well, James. Yeah, in two thousand and three, uh, I'm sure you had a good old season that season because you scored a lot of goals, didn't you, leading up to that? Uh, yeah, that was a that was a good season. Um, it was a a, br a brilliant journey. You know, we we had. Uh, I think we were still. It, it, it's always good to have a good cup run and especially you know for a team like Southampton like we were um I think we were always we were always pretty solid in the league um and not too much we we weren't really flirting with relegation so there wasn't really too much of oh yeah we, we need to concentrate on the league so we'll we'll sort of uh or he, or Gordon wasn't you know pick picking team weakened weakened teams um so we we fought I think we went through the first few rounds and then I think we got a good a couple of good draws um and then it sort of got started getting to the fifth round and then the sixth round and then we thought oh we, you know we're on a good run here and uh, it was a it was a great journey and um the semi-final was brilliant at Villa Park um I'm just trying to I'm I'm, you looking scored the, I'm, I'm you trying to remember well you scored actually, you scored in the semi didn't you no well yeah, no, I didn't. Um, because <laughs> what what happened was, and it, and it's it's really funny how football works. Because um, 
I, re- I think it might have been Brett who went down the left wing, and and you talk. We we, we mentioned we touched on um, strike partners before, and I I owe Brett a lot because in in that season he was running so much and te- you know taking defenders here there and everywhere, which sort of gave me a little bit of space. Um, and I, I, you know, I tried to do the same for him, um, but he, he went down the left wing in the semi-final, and uh, I thought, oh, he's gonna. He's, so I, I, you can see me in the middle of the pitch. I just put my head down and start sprinting as hard as I can because I think it's quite, quite close to the end of the game. And uh, he sort of goes down the left and then puts the ball in, and I thought, I think there's a defender in front of me, and I thought I ain't gonna get that. So I just sort of made bundled into this defender and the defender was Paul Robinson who <laughs> was you know he he, he was the uh, assistant 23s manager at Birmingham yeah um just a couple of years ago when I was at Birmingham and we we spoke about it and he and I always I always I always uh, I was taught from an early age if if the ball's coming over then and the def- defender in the way put him in the net on the ball <laughs> and that's what I did. So we sort of bundled the ball over the line. He went in the net, rolling over. Uh, so did I. And the ball went in. And uh, at the end of the day, we scored. So who cares? Yeah. I, I think it was an own goal because he was a little <laughs> bit of pressure from me. Uh, question I want to ask you, James, is obviously, did you play in any South Coast derbies? Yeah. So, because what I want to ask you is... Um, Leading up to that game, how does that feel compared to an old firm game? I don't know. I don't know where you're involved in Glasgow in the old firm, but around the cities and all, do you know the lead up? Yeah, I've got. Um, we'll come back to it. I've got a good story about the old firm one. Um, yeah. So the the um, it's it's all about it's all about bragging rights for the fans, isn't it? Um, yeah. But you, you, as a professional, you have to you have to approach the game. Of course, there's a little bit more spice on it because it's your local rivals, yeah. um, and this, the the Portsmouth fans love me. You know what I mean? They just love me. I don't think they do. <laughs> they used to give me so much abuse, and it was it was proper personal, and I just used to laugh. But it used to it used to it used to make me play better. So I used to t- I used to turn it into a positive because if 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 opposition fans are having a go at you, then they're worried, and you know they'd every right to be worried. Um, but it was uh, the I don't know maybe because you I don't know the main striker or whatever, but they they absolutely abused me somewhat rotten, and it it was so funny. You, you you'd be getting I played at Fratton Park a couple of times, and you you'd be having dads encouraging the six seven eight year old sons to flick bees up at me and that and you're just going what are you doing mate seriously uh, um but it was yeah brilliant games to play in um uh, and obviously you know the fans love it when there's a, a gap between the between the two teams but i think the the the, the celebration when i scored in the cup um was was pretty pretty good and that's yeah. that's that stayed with, um, you know, the fans and me. Uh, well, up until this point, anyway. Yeah, because that's this big question from Kathy. Is your Hey, James, what's your favourite game for Saints and why? Um, I used to I used to love the night games. Uh, I, I think I think any any game is is different under the lights. So you know, at St Mary's. Um, or uh, the other clubs I've played for, you know, the if you're talking about Rangers, the big European nights at Rangers that we yeah. that we've experienced. I think there's just something about playing at night. Um, and one, the one I can remember is probably the the Arsenal game. Yeah, when we won three uh, two, and I think I think Augustine Delgado scored uh, the winner. Um, again, he, he bundled it over the line, but I think I think that's probably one of my favourite ones. Um, yeah. You could always go for a, you know, a big win or a or a comeback or whatever. But I think that was because they were flying at the time. You no, know, everybody wrote us off. Loved, you know, I, I've a, I've been an underdog all my life. So any sort of stories that go with that and 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 uh, but they 
yeah, we we were totally wrote off, no chance of winning, and we beat them three two, and it, that was probably a, one of my favourites that I can yeah. remember. Okay, James, question from Tara Dewell. Uh, Saints have had some unlucky decisions recently. What's your thoughts on VAR? Who? Oh, how long is this podcast? <laughs> um, I, I, when I, when I retired from playing, and I went to uh, after I'd finished with Accrington, managing Accrington, I went onto the technical panel of the PGMOL. And this was 2013, 14. And yep. they asked me as an ex-player, how, how do we increase the respect between the refs uh, and the players and the refs and the fans? Yep. And I said, you have to be, you have to be honest. You know, people are not stupid. And especially with VAR, because it gets replayed so many times, there just needs to be clear rules that are set out and not changed every three or four weeks. Yeah. Um, which, which again causes confusion. Um, and there has to be accountability. So who, who, who's making the decisions in the VAR hub? I know the referees now have been told to go over to the screens, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. So that's only, that's only sort of recently in the last few weeks, but it just, even with so, if you want to take an example, go go to the uh, the Brighton free kick yesterday, um, when when Lee Mason's made a, a, an obvious error by disallowing the goal because he's blown the whistle, hasn't he? He said he said to Lewis, well, this is what Lewis Dunk said. He said that yeah, you can take the free kick quickly when I blow the whistle. So he blows the whistle, he takes the ball, he takes the uh, free kick, scores, but then yeah. he blows up. But then he's not he's not available for comment. Yeah. So you can't go into the room half an hour after. And everything everything's just they just deny everything basically. Um and I've just said more more clarity, um honesty with the decisions. If end of the day, the referees are human. Yeah. You know, they they can make mistakes and you and you get more credit for holding your hand up rather than saying it to you blue in the face or, you know, I didn't do anything or whatever. But v VAR is very, it's very polarizing, isn't it? Yeah. You, you don't know where the lines are. Again, lack of clarity. What what part of the body, you know, lack of clarity. It's, yeah. it's um, you're talking millimeters now on some decisions, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, it, and is that in the spirit of the game? I don't, yeah. I don't know. Well, if you think the refereeing's bad down here, James, you've played in Scotland. You know how bad it is up there. <laughs> yeah, there was a, there was a few, there was a few refs up there that used to get. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what, not, not targeted, but they were, they had a reputation, should we say, of, of <laughs> making some rash decisions or bad decisions. But I think just they, they just need. You know they need the the professionals now, so you know they need they need as much help as as they can get, because it is a a, a really high pressure um, yeah. situation that they're in. But I just think of being just a little bit more human rather than being, uh, you know, b being behind a closed door all the time and really bureaucratic and you know yeah. just a, a bit of accountability. Okay, James, good question here because you're a striker. James, do you still watch Rangers? And if so, what's your thoughts on Alfredo as a striker? Would you have liked to play alongside him? Yeah, I think he's a good player. He's um I think he's I think he's calmed down a lot, hasn't he? With his, yeah, with his uh, a bit. Yeah, a he's little bit. A little yeah. bit. But I think I think that'll be the influence of you know himself maturing as a, as a man but then the influence of, of Stephen and and Gary at, at the club um but yeah good goal scorer um I don't know whether he, he struggles with his weight does he well I don't think so it's just him uh, it's just a bit, a bit chunky isn't it? Early, yeah but he's um yeah yeah I think I think that you know the 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 very tough aren't they and he sort yeah. of suit, he suits the league um but I think again Without the rules are changing, you can't really be too aggressive these days, can you? You've got to be yeah. in control of everything that you do, yeah. which seems a bit strange for a physical sport. But um, 
yeah, he's yeah, good player. No know, knows where the net is, and uh, yeah, he, he seems to like playing for Rangers, which is important as well. Yeah. Okay, James. Uh, who was the best? Who was the best player James came up against, and who was the toughest? Um, I think the best the best player was was probably Saul Campbell when he was at Arsenal because he he was he was so big and powerful. Re re read the game well. He was quick. Um, we always had some really uh, physical physical battles, but at the end, it was always you know shake hands and. So it was all. It was all. Anything that went on on the pitch was was uh, was uh, allowed. You know what I mean. So yeah. Whether, but it, it, he was he was probably the toughest. Um, the 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 best. Yeah, but he was probably the best. But the toughest. Um, I don't know. Craig Short was tough. There must he have been to, a centre half he hit a play yeah. against. It was it was back in the day where you were allowed to give the cent go you know through the, through the back of the centre forward, um, but I always used to have battles against uh, against Craig. Um, yeah, probably 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 Craig Short. Right. It's a question from Matt Williams. Uh, what happened with Paul Sturrock? Did he lose the dressing room? Um, I don't know. I just I don't think. Uh, I, don't, I remember a story going around actually that that said, "Oh, uh, I'd I'd phoned Rupert Low up and said, um, oh, you need to get this guy out of here. If either he goes or I go, which is total rubbish.' Yeah. Um, but I just think I just think I think Paul 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 was a, a nice guy, but I just think he was a little bit too nice. Um. And, and and things didn't didn't really click for him at Southampton, did they? But I don't yeah. I don't I don't necessarily remember him losing the dressing room. I just don't think the results were, were, good were enough. you know were, yeah were good enough uh, at that time. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Question from Marlin. James, you played with my all time favorite player, Chris Marsden. I loved that he was a proper hard man on the pitch. What was he like in the change room? And did you enjoy playing with him? Yeah, Marsden was was a, a a great character um he was he was Mazza Ma, the good thing about Mazza was he knew he knew what he was good at um we, we all loved him he was brilliant as a, as a personality um he, he was a winner and a, and a leader um and he, he he just he didn't he didn't complicate anything he just kept it simple um but he loved playing football, uh, and he, he was he was brilliant in the dressing room. He was very because he, he was a little bit older than you know myself and a few of the other boys. He used to sort of look after us a bit. But there was a there was a few guys like that. Um, but Mazo Mazo was great. He was he was a little bit nuts, but he <laughs> he was great. Yeah, and I did. Yeah, I really enjoyed playing with him. Yeah, and who was a good who was the characters on there, James? At that time. Dodsey was Dodsey in the middle of it, no? Yeah, Dodsey. Sure. Dodsey was a character. You know, you 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 at that time you you've got Tiz in there, and it was Franny was in there. All different types, but yeah. we, as a group, Klaus, Michael Svensson, Bridgie, uh, Oxy was in there. You know, it was uh, Anders Svensson. When when Kevin Phillips and and Marion came, Brett was in there. We were just we were just we just saw it as, as we were lads playing football. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously take it take it very seriously and be professional about it. Um, but it, as I say, we we were there was no real stars in there, and we just all mucked in. We we knew on the pitch that if if somebody sort of ran out of position, that somebody was going to fill fill in, and we just sort of had that that, that camaraderie a little bit. You know. Yeah. Like we like we were brothers, and we 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 knew we knew that we had each other's back. We trusted each other, and it was it was it was it was a great time. Yeah. Question from uh, Ed McCann. You might not want to answer this, James, but you probably will. Who was the worst manager you played under? Um, I, I, I sort of tend to answer these questions that 
he, either a good manager or a bad manager always teaches you things. So they can't. I don't think there can be a worse one because right. they all okay. taught me either what to do or what not to do. So I have yeah. to thank them all. Yeah. Okay, man. <laughs> good answer. You can't swerve questions. Thank well you done. very much. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say you would swerve anything did you i didn't swerve right. that that was a great answer <laughs> right if you could pick some saints players past and present to be in your squad who would make your team that's from robbie your mate um oh what 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 positions should we go uh let's start with the goalkeeper oh the goalkeeper uh um, yeah, Naomi was was class. Again, another. There's there's something wrong with every goalkeeper, and I don't mean that in a nasty way, but there just has to be to be throwing yourself around on the floor <laughs> all day, every day. There's just so there's got to be something not wide up right. So you know, but not in a nasty way. But um, he, he was he was special, was not he? <laughs> <laughs> he was he was he was class keeper. Uh, yeah, but yeah, he, uh, he had the the. It was it, it was very a very likable character, um, and again, I think I think we've coming into that environment of the of the dressing room where you've got you've got Klaus who was an, an adopted we used to call him the adopted Englishman because he just had such an English mentality. Um, you know, he, he he was tough, wanted to win, and all the sort of old school values that 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 players had, and and. I think it just it just fed through the squad and any sort of didn't matter where they come from in the world they just started ended up thinking like us and that's why that's why we, you know we we were we were a decent team at times um but anti anti was anti was yeah brilliant goalkeeper I think you we all remember that triple save um but you, just with with having somebody like that behind you it gives you confidence, you know. I'm, I'm sure if you speak to the centre half or the back players, but I, yeah. I, I, I knew probably he, he'd save seventy percent of the shots, uh, and he, he was he was great. Really trained really hard, um, understood what his job was, which was to, to keep the ball out of the net, and he, he liked shouting at the centre halves, which I quite enjoyed. From did it? Yeah? yeah, loved it. I thought he, it was a quiet lad. No, he could shout. Could he if he are? didn't think, I think keepers are really good at sort of deferring the blame off them. So any, <laughs> I think Peter Schmeichel was the best. He always used to come out shouting, and you just think, well, hang on a minute, Peter, that's your fault. <laughs> so I think they might have been watching him and took it off Peter. But um, yeah, it was it was great. Uh, yeah, anti. I think Klaus Klaus would be, you know, a, a, a prime time Klaus would would get into into the Saints team now. Um yeah. obviously Tiz. Tiz Wood. Um uh who else? I think you know Bridgie Wood. Yeah. Um out of the out of the players that are, are there now, you know, Ing Ings is Ings is a very good player. Even though he's, you know, he's not having the best of times at the minute, but I'm sure he'll come good again. Prowse's yeah. um, come on leaps yeah. and bounds in the last few years, not just with his play, but his, his how he leads the team. Um, uh, who, who else? Um, I like Stuart Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, I think he's. He's a a very important player for that team. If Stewart plays, then usually the team play well. Yeah. Um, I know he's he's he come down, but he's he's really impressed me. Yeah. With his with the way he plays and how how, how confident he is on getting on the ball and making making things happen. Yeah. So um, he's you know he's 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 I'd like to play with him because he's he's intelligent and he can see passes and. You know, yeah. he'll, have, he'll have a go himself. Yeah. That's just something there, James, when we chat with players. Um, obviously, Davo. Matt Latiss was on here, I think it was about two weeks ago. Um, he's of the opinion that Southampton let Davo go back to Rangers maybe a season too early. Or oh, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, well, Dave always, uh, yeah, Dave was fault that I tore me rec fem. Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, great, great lad. Uh, again, an influential player. It has the ability to take the ball and dictate the pace, whatever, you know, whether that be to slow it down and, and, and let people get back into position or to, or to speed it up. Um, and yeah, I, I would have said that he would have, especially with the way that the, the injuries have gone, you can never foresee how injuries are going to go, you know, within a yeah. squad, but he, he would, have, he would have, he would have definitely been uh, of, of huge use and, and significance if he, yeah. if he wouldn't have been allowed to go back up the road. But, as you can see from what's happening to Dave, oh, he's, yeah. he's he's probably enjoying his his season. So yeah. you know it's uh, it's it swings and roundabouts. But as it sits at the minute at, at Southampton, James, how do you see it? Like a manager has had two nine nil defeats, and has what's he lost six in the trot now? Yeah. Would any other manager survive it? I think the the. The way, the way that Ralph is 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 revered at the club, I think is is justified. I think he's 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 coming. Um, if it, it's not it's not long ago that Southampton were top at league, you yeah. know. So the team doesn't go from being a, a the top of the league team. All right, they might be over overachieving, but they don't go from being that team to losing six on the bounce. And him yeah. not still being the right person to be in charge, he is. You know, he is the man. He, he's found. He's found the way before, um, and I just think that people need to. You know, the fans need to get. I think the majority of the fans are behind him. Now, you're asking about other managers. Would they survive that? Probably not. There's not many managers that probably have the the the, the sort of standing at a club that Ralph has at Southampton. Yeah. Um, because of his, because of you know how the team performed when he came in, and then the the, the progression that we've had. There's yeah. there's loads of mitigating factor, factors why Savant, you know, the 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 team are, are are not producing at the moment. Look at the injury list. Yeah. I think there's a question about the the sort of lack of squad depth, um, and these are these are all things that 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 need to be in place for a team to be consistently successful. Um, if if Southampton have twelve or thirteen of the, of the best players fit, we you know we all know who they are. Then Southampton wouldn't be wouldn't if they if them players that have been fit for this last six or seven games, like you said, when they wouldn't have had them results in them games. It's as simple yeah. as that. So are we talking? Then the board hasn't been releasing the funds to bring the players in that Ralph wants. I think he's mentioned that himself, hasn't he? Um. I think I, I, this is what this is what I'm saying. There's so there's so much information available to people now that that they can make uh, educated um, assessments of any situation. Yeah, and you you know you can't you can't treat people like fools because they've got the access to this information and 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 your own eyes don't lie to you. Yeah. Um you know, unless you've been taking something. But it's <laughs> you know, it's true though, isn't it? You you can yeah. see with your own eyes. And and of course you football's a very emotional game and, and, and people post on social media when the when they're emotional and then you know but when you when you if you strip it back and you and you look at it logically, then yeah, of course there's, there's a reason. Um and and these, you know, it's it's hard for me to to criticize. I'm not going to criticize the club at all. But he's in. He's done a tremendous job with the things, you know, the players and and the the resources at his disposal as Ralph. Yeah, here's an interesting question, James. I don't know who it's from. What happened on your boat on your return from the Isle of Wight when you injured your ankle? Well, that's that's unfactual. So, because it's it's not the right part part of the body that I injured, then I'm not <laughs> going to answer it. <laughs> right, we'll leave that. Okay. Uh, question uh, from Robbie. I think Tala is one of the scenes youngsters who has great potential. Any youngsters there that stand out for you, James? 
yeah, I think we can, you know, we can we can talk about uh, Nathan Teller. He's, he's the game he played at Leeds, um, and I was talking about it. I went down to watch the Saints B versus Man U um, yesterday, and we were talking about his, his performance, um, and it was just like he was playing in the park with his mates he was he was getting the ball he was being uh, he was being uh, positive with it he was running at players and he didn't care he had no he, he didn't care who he was playing against whether it was Leeds away in the premier league it could have been anybody yeah. but that's the sort of thing that you want the more senior players to be doing yeah you know there isn't there isn't any fear fear is fear is something that that, that may happen in the future and and However, you let fear affect you, yeah. then you know it hasn't even happened yet. Yeah. So yeah. realistically, fear isn't isn't even real because it, it it's not in the present. It can only happen in the future, um, and it's one of the biggest biggest uh, debilitating things for for players and and their performance, um, and something that you need to constantly work on and 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 uh, you know work with them. To make sure that they're they're talking to themselves in their mind that they're not scared of anything or they're not fearful of anything, yeah. because what you affect now, you know, happens now. It's not it's it's fear is something that that's that's in the future. Yeah, yeah. Okay, James. Favorite goal for Southampton? Oh, I don't know. There's there's been a few, haven't there? Um, I think my favourite one was probably the half volley at Stadium of Light. Yeah, I think if you if, if you, I don't really know. I'm not going to break it. the the most technical one was probably the the half volley against West Brom at home. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah so the ball goes up. Brett chests it down. And then because the ball's coming back to me, that's probably the most technically difficult one. Um, but, the you know, the free kick at Stamford Bridge, I liked. The one uh, where Joe Cole played me through, I liked that one after 14 seconds. Um, yeah, some some good ones. But probably the, the Stadium of Light one was the favourite. Yeah. Just because of the distance, really. Yeah, the calf five times for England, James. Um, yeah. Was that? A, a, I think you told me it was Swan Gorn Eriksson gave cap to you. Yeah? Does he give you all five caps? Yeah. Do you yeah. think you should have? You just, do you think you should have more caps for your career? Um, I think I should have gone to the. I think I deserved to go to the Euros. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is, isn't it? I just did. I just, I think. Um, I think I, I, I was at the time I was doing a documentary or something, and it was when the players were striking. Yeah. Or they were threatening to go on strike. I don't know if you can remember that. And uh, I did sort of uh, I did a, a piece to camera when I when I went back to my bedroom, and I think that they they broadcast that in the in the actual um, program, and I didn't play for England again after that. So. So no. Yeah, yeah, okay, right. Uh, question from Martin Sutton Saints have a great chance to get to the semi final for the FA Cup. Do you think they can go all the way, James? Yeah, well, I'd like to think so. Yeah, of course, you know, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be supporting them in that. Um, I, I guess it's, yeah, I don't see why not. I think if the, the, we can get the players back now, I know we've had some bad news on, on Romeo. Which is, is you know is a is a bad blow because he's a, another integral player to the to the team, but yeah, I don't see why not, and I'll I'll be I'll be championing them on. Hopefully yeah. they can do, yeah. And obviously tomorrow night, James, a big game away. One of your old teams, Everton, at Goodison. Yeah, that's a that's a tough game for Southampton tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm going up to uh, Sky Sports News. Actually, I'm doing oh, the Sky Sports News. Yeah, so um, but yeah, I think. It's a it's a very tough game, but I think the the thing in one of the things in Southampton's favour, um, you know, if 
if Everton abide by that result at, at um, Anfield, the home form hasn't been that good. Um, so hopefully we can we can capitalise on that. They haven't. I don't. You know. I don't think they've won at home in twenty twenty one. So, uh, yeah. and our away form's probably been better than our home form. Home form, yeah, yeah. So hopefully the two can, you know, yeah. make make sure that that goes in Southampton's favour. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question from Scott Fanson: Who's the top joker in the dressing room, James? Joker. Probably Mazza. Yeah. I can't include myself, so probably Mazza, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm going to put this up here because I know you've got a story about the old firm. So the says, oh, yeah. I, re I rated you highly as a, a player, James, and would love to see you score the winner in an old firm game. You played in some high tempo matches, but which ones would you compare to the madness of an old firm? Oh, I, I was watching Sky the other day. Uh, I think it was yesterday and it was an old firm game from uh, well Kenny was playing it might have actually been and, and um, Maurice Edu scored the oh the last um, kick of the winner. game yeah. yeah do you remember it I think yeah. I, was, I, I was at that game but I, I, whether I was in, in the stand injured or, or on the bench I don't know but um, I always t I always tell uh, my mates you have to go to an old firm game yeah I've been, I've been, uh, I'd not been to one until until I signed for Rangers, but it's 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 like yeah, I always liken it to when we had the the run up the week running up to the FA Cup final, <laughs> and, and the buzz big. around the city, yeah, you know. But it's like that for every old firm because when I was up there, it was it was it was crazy. Uh, I sw I don't know. I, you get you get different games that have different tempos for different reasons, um, but I don't know what it's going to be like. Well, I don't know what it's like to play in front of no fans, but when you when you have the fans there, yeah, there whether it's at Ibrox or or it's at Celtic, it the 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 living and breathing every single ball and every single tackle and every single pass. You know, and 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 the it's going up and down like this, and the, and the volume. But the vo yeah, what that was one of the things, the, the noise, yeah. Um, and that they, they they were brilliant. And I always t I was going to say before, I always tell my friends, you have to go to a game and watch one. And, and you know, whoever you support, you've got to go and experience the yeah. old firm when when the fans are in, when the fans are allowed back in, obviously. Yeah. Um, because they were they were just they were just great. And I, I, at my first one, I was a bit like, "Whoa!" <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was a, very, a spectacle. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, because all the players, obviously, it's, it's chatty players have played at Rangers, but players like you're talking players like Ronald De Boer's played in Barca Madrid games. Uh, Kachelskis has been up there. Has played in Merseyside derbies. He's played in the Manchester derbies. They've all said the old firm all yeah. day long for atmosphere. Yeah. Totally. I think. I think. Yeah, they're right. Um, Two two deep, you know, big stadiums full, uh, and the and the passion and, and and what's at stake. Uh, the the noise didn't really seem to to go down. It was always either you know either really loud or ridiculously loud. It yeah. doesn't even get, doesn't even get quiet when when the ball goes out for a, a corner or a you know a goal kick or whatever. Yeah. Right, here's one here. This is this came out of the blue. Uh, Lee Brown has James had any contact in regards to road Southampton? Not as yet. That's the answer. <laughs> Not as yet. That is yeah. Well, no, I, I I haven't no, unfortunately. But um, you know, it's it's obviously something that uh, I would like to do in the in the future for sure. Um, and you know, having having gained. Uh, eight years experience in coaching as well as me, me playing career and I, when I managed Accrington I loved it it, it was for 18 months there was so much to do but I knew I, I wanted to be a better coach so now I've done all my coaching badges I've got my pro licence um, yeah. and I feel that you know one day I'll, I'll be I'll be down at St Mary's in, in some capacity or other yeah yeah 
Okay, so there's no contact being made. No, so to answer Lee, Lee's Lee's question, <laughs> has any contact been made at Royal at Southampton? Not as yet, Lee. Not as yet. There you go, Lee. So not as yet. Okay, uh, James, that's an hour you've given us your time yet. We appreciate that, it. I thought we were doing two hours. We can do two hours if you if, if you you can do two hours, mate. If you want, I can sit here. Yeah. Well, we'll do it another twenty minutes. We'll be doing another yeah, twenty I'll, minutes. I'm, going, I'm enjoying myself. Are you good? Yeah. Uh, good. Okay. Right, folks. More questions. Get them in. James is going to give us another twenty minutes. Get the questions coming in. Uh, okay. So, Kathy, as you would have said, she'll be tuned to the Sky Sports tomorrow night because James is on. Is it? Are you doing? Are you going live at the, at the game, James? No, it's it's a, it's a Sky Sports News. So oh. they'll. I think the game's on Sky. Right. So you're doing Sky Sports News. Yeah. People that are watching the game. Yeah. Right, okay. Now, I'm going to put this up, James. I'm sure you've heard this, right? And it's about Anthony Niemi. Has James heard the talk sport Hearts fan talking about Niemi? Yeah. You've heard it? No, oh, anybody's yeah. heard that. Okay. He's finished. Yeah, he's finished. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. He's only 20. He's only 20. 28. Yeah, 28. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I'm sure you remember Brian Loudrop played for Rangers as well. An absolute legend for Rangers, but I know what you're going to say here because you obviously played with us. But who would you say was a better all round player, Brian Lerjup or Matt Latissier? Uh, the only, I, I mean, growing up, you 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 sort of um, Tiz and Tiz and Brian were, were were two players that you know you you would try and emulate. Um, I think with having having experienced Tiz at first hand, yeah, some of the stuff he did in training was better than the stuff that we see, you know, what a player re reeled off. And 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 for a young lad to go into an environment where you've got somebody like that, I was lucky at Blackburn because Shearer was there, yeah. and and he was my you know he was my hero until I met Tiz. Um, and uh, but to 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 watch these guys, you know how how they train and it having experienced that, and and of course I you know do you remember the goal that, that Tiz scored at Blackburn where he picks it up and then he chops a couple of ways and then he hoops that shot over Tim Flowers. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. I was sat in the stand as a Blackburn fan. Yeah, yeah, that game. Wow. And I remember, I remember telling him that, and he went. You, he just went, just turned to me, and he went, "You're welcome." <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but having having experienced his, uh, uh, you know, in training and, and in games, uh, I would I would have to say Tiz. But yeah. I would uh, on saying that, I know, uh, you know, having having worked with with Gary Monk, he 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 was a player. Um, at Swansea, when Loudrup came in as manager, yeah, that's Michael the brother. Oh, is it Michael the brother? Oh, Michael's oh, right. brother. Talking about oh, Brian. Right. I, right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think growing growing up, I was um, there were two players that you sort of looked up yeah. to, um, yeah. but because I've had first hand experience of of Tiz, I would I would have to say him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now here's a good one here because Tiz told the story about when they were now obviously you weren't there, James, but they had a they had a, a pre season in Bangor, Northern Ireland, Tiz. So the Tiz has it in his book up the story about the drink. So it's saying Tiz had some funny stories about the trip with the lads. What's the funniest thing that happened with you lads? So with your time, James, it must be an odd story. Oh my god. Um What what was Tizzy's one about? What? So what happened was they they went to Bangor in Northern Ireland, and they all he ended up they all ended up having a few beers with a manager. Yeah. So then the manager basically got drunk. They put him to bed. So they all went to a nightclub, but all known to them was the, the nightclub backed onto the manager's uh, hotel room. So all the right. DJ was shouting out the names of the players as they come in. Oh, no. <laughs> this is two two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Um, that was back in our Alan, Alan time of Alan Ball. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, 
I, I can't even remember any. Come on, there has to be a Christmas party. Christmas party. There has to be a trip away. Somebody. There's always I re one. I, re I, re I remember this is this is mad, but I remember I remember going to Austria, and uh, we we always used to get bikes. Do you remember? <laughs> so we always used to be up in the mountains, and uh, you used to you used to get a bike, yeah. and then. Um, used to have to go to the warm up and that and uh i remember it, it was quite obviously hilly in the in the mountains yeah yeah we're, yeah. we're good um and then uh i remember i remember jonah so the the the, the, no, the most valuable thing to a goalkeeper is his hands in it yeah and they were and and the, the hotel was on the side of this not a mountain but it was on a steep hill and uh we were saying oh don't you know, don't go around that corner too quick, um, because it was on the way to the training ground, and um, you know, Doc, John was a, a big lad, wasn't he? But he was he was a little bit daft, and he went, oh yeah, I'll, I'll go around it quick, and he come off this bike, and he 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 scraped all his hand and his arm, he didn't yeah. break it, but it was so funny because he's he's a big lad, isn't he? And he was dead, and uh, we were we were behind him, and we were just watching him. And it, it was really clumpy. He just went round and like skidded off, and then all this dust come up, and then he just he just he came up looking a bit dazed. And he had um he had blood all over his hand and his arm, and I just thought, oh no, he's he's the goalkeeper. <laughs> all mad. Um, but yeah, that, I could, yeah, you put me on the spot there. Did I? Right. Okay. No, it's all right. I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm not with that, but I can I can remember that. Right, it's a good question here. Um, I don't know who it's from. Was Fabrice Fernandez? I think it's Fabrice Fernandez. A great player or a great frustration on the pitch? Fabrics Fernandez. I just spelled it wrong, haven't they? Fabrics. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Fabrice was, yeah, very good player. Um, but I, I distinctly remember a conversation that Fabrice and I had because he was frustrating. Um, and I think he, he Fabrice was a little bit of an enigmatic character and he, he, he if 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 the manager sort of told him not to chop yeah because because we'd be in the middle making runs so if he's going down the left wing and i'm thinking right he's going to put this ball in with his left foot i'm going to make a run but then he chops back on his right yeah so you make another run then he chops back again on his left <laughs> And then he chops back on it, and and it was it, honestly, it re really was frustrating. So, but he was the type of lad that would, if if you sort of went against him, or you said, oh, you know, just just do that, then he'd do it even more, just to, yeah. just to be a pain in the ass. Not not doing it maliciously, but it, yeah, it was frustrating playing with Fabrice up until a point where I said, Fabrice, you're allowed to do one chop. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're going down the left uh, and you and you want to cross it with your left, great, I'll be there. Yeah. But you, you're only allowed to chop it back onto your right once. <laughs> and he was like, okay, okay, beats, okay, okay, like that. <laughs> and after that, because it, it wasn't sort of confrontational, Yeah. and I said, because, it, you know, it makes it really difficult for us in the middle and, yeah. and, and you'll, you'll, you'll get more assists and, you know, so you tell we'll, me we'll that's a Fabrice Fernandez. That's Fabrice Fernandez was at Rangers for a bit. And um, oh, and I don't did, know. Did, yeah, did he play for Fulham? I'm sure if somebody's on can tell us. I'm sure that's a Fabrice Fernandez was at Rangers. We had him on loan long before Southampton. I reckon we'll come back to that. Okay, so. Scott Daly, who was your best pal whilst at Rangers, and do you still keep in contact with any of the boys from your Rangers days, James? Um, yeah, probably. Uh, well, Davy Weir, um, Lee McCulloch. Um, I haven't spoke to Greegs for a while, but I'll, I'll text him because he got married recently. You said, didn't you? Yeah, I do. Greegs. Uh, who else? I remember. I remember at, at Rangers there was a there was a group of young lads, and and in it was was Cal Naismith, John Fleck, Kyle Hutton, 
Um, Jamie Ness. Um, yeah. And there was another young lad centre half. And and they and they were used to train with us, um, but they weren't really getting in the first set. I said, "You lads, you need to go go out and play some games, and you know, <laughs> get some experience and that." Because I yeah. I sort of it was a thing that I took through me, and I was you know I was trying to look after them, and they were saying, "Oh, you know, the club won't let them." I said, "Honestly, I said go and, go and play some games somewhere because they weren't they were training with us, but they weren't being utilised, and there was no sort of game." Yeah, uh, schedule for them. So all they were doing was training, and then maybe being on the bench for the first team, but not getting on and stuff like that. I said, "You need to go and play some games." And I remember, I remember speaking to speaking to him, um, and then obviously I signed Cal, didn't I? From all oh, right, uh, for, for Accrington Stanley, yeah, from, uh, for Accrington, and then and then Flecky went went out, didn't he? Doing really well at Sheffield United. Obviously, team not doing well, but he's playing well, um, and it. I, I said I, I still speak to them guys. Um, still speak to Davy Weir. Um, still, still speak to Lee. Um, yeah. I spoke. I spoke. I didn't. I haven't spoke to Dave for a bit, but I'll I'll, t I'll text him. Uh, who else was there? Did you get on with Alan McCoy? Still okay? Yeah, Ali was all right. Yeah. 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 Good he was guy. a bit. He was a bit fiery. Yeah. yeah, but no, but just just passionate about the club and yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, I've I've spoke to Ali probably more recently on Talk Sport than anything else. Um, yeah. but yeah. But what's, yeah, what's, what's, what's your opinion, James, on people people down here look up at Scotland and think, yeah, it's easy up there. It's you know, it's a shit. All right, we all know football's not the same standard as in the Premier League, but they talk about how easy it is. It's not easy, is it? No, it's not easy, um, and I think you know if you're talking about teams like Rangers and um, you know the playing the playing in Europe, so they're in the Europa League. Yeah. Um, but at, at the time, we, they were you know we're playing Champions League. Uh, yeah. But I, I don't I don't think there can ever be a comparison between the two leagues because. It's never going to happen, is it? You know, you know, unless they play in Europe against each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, I think, if you're talking about Premier League and 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 the, the SPL, then I think there's maybe you know maybe only two or three teams in Scotland that would would compete yeah. in that league, yeah. and that and that's but that's being honest. Yeah, but that's coming down to James to, to money from Sky that the teams down in England receive. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, you know. the 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 distribution of money is is a is is massively have weighted towards the Premier League. Um, yeah. Should be a lot more that filters through, not just not just to to you know the the leagues directly below the Premier League, but but to to the leagues below that as well and into grassroots because the 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 youngsters of today are going to be the players of tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and and of course we we understand that they have had such an upheaval. Um, so who, who know you know who knows what's gonna what's gonna happen? Um, yeah. But it, it definitely should be distributed better. Yeah, within the okay. grassroots of the game. So we have a confirmed. Yeah, Fabrice Fernandes was at Rangers. Yeah, he was season two thousand and one apparently, um, and that's from John McKinnon. John. I will have to say good morning to John because John's joined us from Brisbane, Australia. He gets up oh. and watches. He gets up and watches all these podcasts. So, so how, how many hours is he? Is John in front then? John, what time? What is he? 12, 12 in front, eleven maybe. So he gets up. He watches all these podcasts. Fair play, John. Uh there's a good one here from Kathy Isherwood. James, do you remember the trips to Paulton Parks? You and the team used to do with disabled and deprived kids. Paul, Portland's Park is, uh, yeah, it's now it's now my kids' favourite place to yep. go in this. Well, when you're allowed, yeah, but yeah. We, we we used to do a we used to do a lot of stuff um, in the community, and I think it's important as well for for the stuff. And as I said at the beginning, with with the Saints Foundation, I'm sure I'm sure the players still do it as and when allowed. But yeah, it's really important to be able to. The best thing for me was, you know, 
you just try and make somebody smile or you try and make a little yeah. bit of difference to the day, you know, and uh, it, it was always a high priority for me. Yeah. Okay, it's a question here. If you could score a goal against, what's goalie? So obviously that's a goalkeeper you don't like, James. <laughs> if I could score a winning goal against, what goalie? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You might want to score against one of your mates, and then you can and you can batter him. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think I've probably scored against most of them. Yeah. But, <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. It's, it was funny actually because that 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 favourite goal you said to me about uh, was against Tor Thomas Sorensen, um, and that was two thousand and three, and then in two thousand and. 2010 I signed for Stoke and he's a Stoke keeper and it's the first yes. I walk through the door and it's the first thing he comes up to me and says don't don't be trying that in training mate <laughs> and it's like seven years before Brilliant. it's scarred him for life good yeah but you talk you talk about goalkeepers there over uh James and obviously we were talking before we came on here but how good was Alan McGregor for Rangers yeah uh, I think Greg Griggs was was good when I, when I was at Rangers in, you know in 2010 but I think he's he's sort of uh see you know he's matured as a as a player and and, and I was talking about this yesterday actually about young young goalies Go, goalkeepers generally you know they, they sort of come into their own when the when they are 30 plus um and that's due to you know you get the odd exception that, that, that sort of mature earlier but a, a lot of it um as is with outfield players but a lot of it to do with goalkeeping is, is mentality and being able to control your emotions and um i think that as i said griggs griggs was unbelievable in training um and and in the games but i i think he i don't know he, his performances recently have been have been superb as well so he's he's had a you know yeah. a, a great career and and he, I think the experience, the more experience you have as a goalie, it, it, it sort of helps you. Um, yeah. And we're seeing that in, in Alan's performances. Yeah, yeah. And then I was obviously we had Jason Dodd on a few weeks ago too, James. Um, do you play in the game where Dodsey scored the goal against Portsmouth direct from the corner? Yeah, scored in that game. Scored in that game? Which, yeah. What was the score? 3-1, three, 3-0? Three, 3-0. Three, nil. Three, nil. Three, nil. Well, I'm sure Dodsey's told you a story about his brother. No, the, the bookmaker. No, his brother. His brother. Stuck Whoa, to he can't. He can't be saying things like that. No, no, his brother. He's no, no. His brother put on twenty cut and Dodsey scored the first goal. So the goal's been given, but it wasn't Dodsey, was it? It went as an OG, but the bookie has paid out. Oh, they paid out, did they? Paid out, and Dodsey's complaining because he says he's never seen a, a pound from it. Wow, I no used to ask, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, Dodsey's flipping tighter than cramp. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, we, um, yeah. What, what was I gonna say then? Oh my god. Yeah, so I, I have, I, I have Southampton fans coming up to me all the time saying, "Oh yeah, our uh, first goal scorer, whatever," and. Uh, and I say, all right, then where's you know, where's my cut? <laughs> oh, every week I used to put money on you scoring first, and I was like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. So, Enjoy James, it. apart obviously, um, you, you've been you've been along with Gary Monk at where you've been Swansea, Sheffield Wednesday, Middlesbrough. What are you at at the minute then? Um, just at home at the moment, being sure. uh, you know, I've 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 learned. With with how the industry is, I've learned that if you have time out of the game to to embrace it, spend time with my kids, because usually, yeah, um, I have to move away, um, but I get home as much as I can. But that's you know, it's just a sacrifice that that I'm I'm willing to make to get to where I want to get to. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Okay, James, that's another twenty minutes you've given us, mate. It's been well, brilliant. I'll, I'll invoice you, no problem. Yeah, you can send the voice through, mate. <laughs> I need you. I need you to stay on. Just stay on, mate. When I take you off here, because I want to speak to you with something else. And then, right. yeah. Okay, yeah. James. Yeah, Thanks very much, mate. Thank Later you. on, mate. Bye bye. You stay on, mate. 
Okay, folks, there you have it. James Beatty. Good stories. Folks, next Sunday, it's Jimmy Nickel. I uh, look forward to having Jimmy on, obviously. Jimmy played in the Northern Ireland to beat Spain nearly two World Cup and also Rangers and uh, Man United. Uh, and then with a few other players coming up. But folks, if you're on this podcast now, if you're on Facebook, like and share, folks. Please like and share. We need to get it. Uh, we've got nearly 30,000 people now on the Facebook page. We're just about 100 people short for 30,000. Um, and if you're on Twitter, hit the retweet button. And I hope you all enjoyed it, folks. And I'll see you again next week. Night, folks. <laughs>